the game here. We are live on Dust2 between Navi and Flipside, Ukrainian team versus the Swedish mix, and we get to see, or mix, no, rather team. And we get to see now who's going to get into the winner match of our final group here in the phase. Yes, indeed, and it will be Navi starting on the more favored side here on Dust2, the Terry side. But actually, a lot of teams do prefer to start on the CT side now, just because, you know, a little bit more room for error. Great stack that they have in the middle with Barsic standing on top of somebody else, and maybe that's going to catch Navi off guard. They're ready for it. Relic is the one carrying his on the shoulders. They're all going to come running through, and the Glocks, oh, team kill, in fact, but seized. He keeps on pounding through, and they do it. We'll see. Four and three. I mean, obviously, Navi have the advantage here, but what, what are Flipside going to do? They're trying to find out in the middle here and save, looking for the kill. Does reasonable damage, but there's still a man down. Yeah, it, the, at the moment, there's nothing really the CTs can do here. They've been completely overrun. I mean, amazing that that guy could even get a free kill there. The whole time, his teammates weren't even helping. Oh, that, and that's, that's why, though, because Seize was trying to go through the window. Yeah, and that's <coughs> obviously what really well saves. going to go down, and there is the last player falling, and Navi winning the pistol round without much issue at all. Um, once they get the two kills in the middle, they actually waited and fell back. Do you think that was a good... I mean, obviously it worked out, but would you have rather seen them push up aggressively? Uh, I think when you're playing a team like that, yeah, like aggression, you should start with that and then you, you tone it in if it's not working. Actually, an interesting thing about Na'Vi is, even though... Like, I've always said, I said this in 1.6, even if you're the best team in the world on Dust2, you generally don't want to play Dust2 because it's so variable. You can still lose yeah. to other teams that aren't as good as you, though. But actually, Na'Vi has been exceptionally good on Dust2. It's not their best map by any means on statistical level, right? Yeah. But they've beaten Nip twice on it. They've beaten Titan on it. They, used, they beat Ostana last year on it. They've beaten Again on it, who's now versus Pro. They've essentially beaten every top team on this map. True. So in theory, they might be like the best team in the world on this map. Oh, look at what Flipside are doing. Rushing up to the T spawn. Going to run into Suit. They already got the one kill, but now the Nova Shotgun comes into play. And he's going to get a lot of money for doing this. Even if they've lost two players, actually. Oh, wow. They... They keep going here. Third kill coming in for Flipside. Zeus is going to go down as well. Now Guardian, he'll finish it off. But that's a terrific eco round coming out from the Swedish team. And what a throwaway of guns by Navi there to just lose four. I mean, yeah, you still won the round. You're still in control. You still have guns now. But that's where two rounds from now you wanted that money, where you're not going to have it now if you lose. Oh, man, that's painful. Though, when it comes to the terrorist side here, because you said this earlier about Hellraisers being a slow team on the, on the T side, I think Navi notoriously is incredibly slow, at least that's how I remember them playing on, on almost any map. Just slowly, carefully, that, that's Zeus's style, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I would suggest from the way they pushed up like that, you usually only push up super hard like that when you have no respect for your partner at all. You're like, we're just way better skill-wise. If we just push up, we're just going to kill them. Like, I'm going to peek him, I'm going to get the kill. Oh, yeah. Usually on CT, you'll never do that unless it's a real... Like, every now and then you might have one strategy where you push people to mid, but never to just all rush that. I mean, obviously they had no guns, but... I think you'll probably see in this game Navi be much more aggressive on CT side, trying to like dominate the CT half. Well, I mean, that's what we're seeing so far, and actually they are losing some players again. There's Edward going down, it's back into a 2 on 2, and they pick up a rifle this time. And he doesn't have a lot of health, but if safe and safe is for the next round, that'd be huge. With his health, I think it's almost impossible based on where he is right now. Yeah, he is going to go down, you're right. So let me, let me ask you something else though. If Navi don't play their normal style in this game, do you think that's going to be an advantage if any of the other teams that are in the tournament are watching them? They won't be able to read what's happening on Dust2, basically. Yeah, I'd say to a degree, but it could also work against Na'Vi in the sense that you haven't actually warmed up by doing the things that you normally do. So now oh. you're, you're kind of playing not your own game, and then you go into the next game on Dust2, where you're not going to do that against NIP. You're never going to push right off like that on an anti by you. No, that's very true. <coughs> so maybe it could be like a double-edged play there. Guardian obviously picking up an AWP, no surprise at all. Jumpy picking up the AWP, and actually when we saw him play against Expert in that ESCA intermediate match, he did really well. He just went off and killed absolutely everybody, so I don't know. I, I wouldn't even make a comparison, but just, I understand why they put uh, Jumpy in that position, basically. 3-0 lead early on, flip side looking to have their first rifle round, and in the middle, taking a little bit of a peek as one of the terrorists, and immediately smoked up by Hydrox. Not going to play that game. Right now, it feels like they're actually just using Guardian as a tool to wedge up against Short. He's just checking the bomb site, and you know, they get full control of it as well. Down on long, though, Jumpy's looking. Gonna get smoked off immediately. Now, just. And it's a big risk to go with the all on the fourth round. Because if you lose this, now you're in a really bad money situation. Especially because on CT, you don't have, like, there's no scenario if we get the bomb down, you get money out. There's, there's nothing like that for CT. So they have to go and be even more smart with how they economically manage the game. 
That is very true. Oh, with Zeus actually does get the kill on Jumpy there. So already, as you were saying, the, the economic disadvantage. They just lost the AWP. It's a 4-4. Four four. Bomb's going to go down. And Na'Vi, very smartly, staying in control of short here. I'm wondering if they planned it accordingly. Because if they planned it for short and they keep short here, what is what is Flipside going to do? Yeah, at the moment, this is a big problem as well. You bought all these guns, and now you haven't even given yourself to a chance to really win the round. Oh, Except somehow fighting Somehow it they have, because someone got two kills. And look at the planning position here. This, that's horrible for no, Na'Vi. It should be safe to use it. So, okay, when, when I saw that they had put that many people on short, I just assumed that the plan was going to be for short, and yep. obviously that plan is the worst possible plan you can have almost. No, that, that just looked like, again, they didn't respect their opponents, and they didn't do it properly. Yeah. They just they probably didn't even communicate. They were just short, and then the other guy just planted wherever, and they're not going to come in and kill us all. Oh, oh, wait, that's exactly what they did. So definitely a misplay here from the from the terrorist side. It's going to give Flipside their first round. They're going to be really happy about that. And they even pick up another AWP. So they must have stolen pretty much both of them, I think. Or they bought one, at least stole one. So that's looking good. Well, uh, uh, the good thing about the AWP is it is an equalizer because it's literally point and click. So if you have anyone who's half decent with it, they might not be a top player themselves because there's more to being a top player than just good AWPing. But on a map like Dust2, you have so many opportunities to use the AWP on CT side that it's a way to turn a game against a team who's much better than you. Especially on Dust2, you're right, it is. I mean, we'll see if they can actually manage to do it. Double up setup's very powerful, and Navi now don't actually have the money to, to buy an AWP themselves. Only, uh, only rifles all around. And they, again, take control of short, gonna push long at the same time. Let's see if this works. This is a very aggressive angle to hold like that as well. Usually you'd put it over the other side of the door. But I, I, I would imagine he's not going to move to the right, he's just going to keep it on like that. He was hoping that if he sees the guy and the guy moves back, then he's got less distance to move back. Yeah. So I actually suggest he's probably not a really good op, he's just half decent, and that's like a utility kind of shot to do. Yeah, well, it worked the first time. Seuss takes a return, that's safe going down, and now it's a 4-on-4. Four four. Another grenade going to come out. Really, just keeps pushing up like this. He's going to miss yeah, the shot. I think that was a leg, actually, and now sees doing some ADADing while spraying. And in fact, it's been a while since we've seen too much of that with the AK. Now it's a 4-on-2, so a quick bounce back here from uh, from Navi. Oh, I wonder how he knew he was coming up there. He must have been told by someone. Maybe there was some communication, after all. So... You know, what, what do Flipside do? The double up setup doesn't work so well. And we saw in the eco round that they were doing some pretty crazy stuff, all rushing up T-Spawn. Do you think they should keep on that, that mad style where they just do something that's so unexpected that maybe Na'Vi's yeah, actually going to I think not that's actually a better approach. I mean, you're not going to, like, out-execute Na'Vi. You're not going to out-skill them, theoretically, as in in normal circumstances you are out Because yeah. in normal situations, that's why pros are pros. They, they do better in those situations. Yeah. If you make the game very chaotic, if you make it close range, if you do crazy things like try and spray down everyone instead of just kill one guy and pull back, as, as counterintuitive as it sounds, that actually gives you a better chance of winning because that's where the pro doesn't play against that all the time. And those aren't particularly high, high, uh, effective, highly effective scenarios, yeah. okay. even yeah. for the best teams in the world. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, I guess another way of putting it is that maybe Navi's been conditioned to play against a certain style for a while. So if you just, I mean, it, it might be difficult because the flip side aren't like completely new players either. So they sure. might be conditioned to do the very same thing. But if they can break that, I mean, maybe there's a chance, because I, I think you're right. If, if we just play a standard game, it's kind of like in StarCraft sometimes when you see someone try and take a macro game against some you know, StarCraft player that's just insanely good at that. It doesn't really make sense. I mean, this is crazy here with the two pistols and AWP and two Colts. Like, this is a round where you can see them losing it, except that they're probably going to get his first kill. Oh, yeah. They there's one. Peek out at the right time. Seems like now we should have some coverage then. Guardian goes down. Seuss with one kill, but actually works out in favor of flip side. Now it's a four on three. And Navi's still just hanging around the middle with the bomb, basically. I don't know. This, I mean, this is looking like a promising round. We, we just have to see. Because obviously Navi's waiting for someone to just aggressively push up. Then they can even the numbers immediately. But for, oh. if they walk a catwalk now, the Z guy is going to have to immediately jump down or run backwards. So he's going to be in trouble. Unless. He'll have communication, but there we go. He's jumped down already. He thinks it's going to be B, I think. Yeah, smokes up and CT spawn. That's usually a big indication that it's going to be a B split push coming. But instead, he actually falls back. He's got the eagle up. He's going to go down immediately. He's three, basically. Picks up the kill. Hydrox gets the one in return. See if he can get another one. If they do, they definitely win the round. That is a three on one. And Hydrox does it. The, the bomb, bomb is down. Nice done. And oh, God. Triple kill from Hydrox. And nicely played here from Flipside. Navi actually picked the correct area to go. That was where the weak spot was. But then they didn't go fast enough. They walked in one by one and tried to take aim duels. Because they think, well, we're the better aimers. So I'll kill that guy. Like, actually, what you were saying before, there's actually a, a famous quote that sums up that scenario of counterintuitive playing, why it can work versus the best. I think it's a quote from Mark Twain where he says that 
the, the greatest swordsman in the world has nothing to fear from the second best swordsman in the world. Yeah. But he has everything to fear from a, a rank amateur who's never held a sword. Because the idea is the amateur doesn't know how you're supposed to use a sword, so he could just like stab you in a really weird way and you wouldn't even be ready. Whereas oh. the great swordsman would use a really efficient... And that's what yeah, you're yeah. practiced to, to de parry and to deflect, you know. I appreciate that. I think that's exactly what I was trying to say. So now, really aggressive move from Na'Vi, jumping down into CT spawn. Obviously, it's an eco round for them, so they're just trying to see if they can maybe surprise someone. And, I mean, oh. we saw the round before this, how slow they were. And actually, this time it's going to work out. They're going to get the bomb down from Guardian. So this is a very good round here from, from Na'Vi. That's everything they wanted. I mean, they get one kill already, and Guardian still alive. Jumpy will take him down, but that's, that's perfect. A key thing to note, though, is that a mistake people make in CS is they think of CS maps the same way they were in 1.6. So a lot of the trends carried over. So, for example, Train is a CT-sided map. Mm. Dust 2 used to be a heavily T-sided map. Like yeah. The average you'd want to win there is 9 or 10 rounds on T-side. But nowadays, it's mo actually become a CT-sided map. Like, if I had to guess, I'd say the absolute top teams probably win, like, 8 or 9 rounds on CT half versus the lesser teams. So, if you're flip yeah. side, it's a bad sign for you at the moment that you're trailing on the CT side. You probably need to get to like 10 rounds on CT to win here. Because yeah, Navi's be likely gonna, gonna get rolling on their CT side. I, have, I think you're absolutely right. It's, it's really switched around on, on Dust2 recently, and it obviously it depends on the team and which side they're stronger on, but it, it, there is a big change. There's no doubt about that. But Navi again, actually this time with a little bit of a faster round, already pushing up Susan. He's gonna go down, two people waiting for him, safe, gonna get the opening kill. And then the rest of Navi really slow down. They are that, I mean, playing this slowly, it seems like Flipside are just accepting that that's what's happening and they're waiting. You would think though that would actually play into Navi's favor because in these scenarios, you're expecting by taking one on one aim jewels, you're gonna get into those 1v1s and then three, your player should win them. Oh well, and Edward is winning them, even in one on two like that. He's gonna be making the crossover, they're gonna smoke up once more, and then they're gonna run right into the B bomb site. So three on oh actually that's a great kill from Jumpy. That makes it two on three. Obviously a big difference for retaking this bomb site. I'm surprised to see Jumpy repeatedly using that weapon as well, because the key thing is let's just see what happens in the oh. Edward wins it quite easily. He actually never was an opera in 1.6. He was always just a standard utility rifle guy who actually called tactics. Oh, and Edward clutches it at the end. I think that was a quad kill from Edward there. Guardian got the one up in window, but otherwise it was all Edward all the way. So that's pretty nice seeing that already. That's why if you're Navi, you can play this recklessly because... And you can even just walk into sites one by one and try and take an aim duel because when you have someone like Edward, who do they have in comparison? Nobody who can do that. He, at any time, Guardian, Edward, maybe Seize can do a three kill or four kill and totally win you a round out that you should have been losing on... on paper you know yeah whereas unfortunately for the the other guys flip side they need to almost everything to go right i won't say everything but almost everything to go right in a round to win and this time and we've seen these repeated half buys from them on ct side I was gonna say, I was usually just to it's say. really bad for a ct team to do half buys because you can't recover guns that are at the other side in that scenario whereas on t side you can take a lot more risks because the guy behind you can run over your gun pick it up and immediately have a weapon again yeah, it makes me wonder how that's going to work out. It could be that they were trying to equalize their economy, but I definitely disagree with that. I'd much rather have them save once more and then buy an AWP next time, because it just makes more like, sense. Look at this position here. Those two guys there who were trying to do like a cut-off, even though one did get the kill in the end, that's actually the worst position to be in. Because the guy aiming down can aim at your whole body. You can only aim at his head, and you've got a gun that's not like uber accurate or whatever if you fire more, more than one bullet at a time. Yeah, that's very true. Well, Sabre is actually in a potentially a good position. If he gets a little bit of backup, he can hit some good headshots here, but he's going to go down Seuss instantly with the, re with the takedown, and that's going to make them run rip side away. Not going to try and take this fight today. Yeah, an interesting piece of info about Zeus, actually. He was the in-game leader in Na'Vi, and so as a result, he used to die a lot, and he was, wasn't like a star player or anything. They had a little short period where they made Starx the in-game leader, and he had a tournament where he was the MVP of the whole tournament. He went crazy fragging when he was released in the, the in-game calling role, Zeus. Yeah. And actually, back in the day before that, when he played with this Russian team, Virtus Pro, he'd also been not like a star, but like maybe the third star on the team. So he's someone where... He does the in-game leading role because he's the best at it in the team. Yeah. But he actually has some fragging skills, a lot more than some other people do, okay? Whereas usually the guy who gets the in-game leading role, he's not suited to be a fragger. That's why he became an in-game leader and embraced that side of the game. But it seems like that's that's been a trend in Global Offensive for a while, that it's actually been a requirement to have a really successful team that you have an in-game leader who can also get kills. Yeah. Think of Exist or someone else like that. And actually, Existence in, in, in the former very games team, but Titan's also been playing a lot better uh, at just fragging. 
In, in 1.6, your stars could have such an impact on the game that you didn't need the in-game leader to be a super fragger. But almost every top team has an in-game leader who's half decent at fragging, at yeah. least. Like, even Fiflaren. Fiflaren actually was playing better when he was the in-game leader than he does now when he's the utility player again. He's getting more frags. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Guardian gonna get that kill through the smoke. Relic trying to see if he could sneak down, but he got caught. That's just some really good timing on Guardian's part. Maybe a little bit of uh, misfortune on Relic's Look side. Look at these more half buys. They've done something like three or four half buys here where you could have turned that into two full buy rounds and had a chance. Yeah, I'm not. I'm really questioning this as well, but they are getting some kills in here. And actually, Seize is going to go down. But I think guy Edward, behind him, in theory, can just clean the round up. Yeah, no problem. Oh, Edward, he's going to just be uh, escaping the flash then. But the bomb is down on short. He's going to try and make a run for it. And Edward? The guy in the B site needs to come and help quickly now. There's no point staying there. Yeah, easy kill for Starix. Instant headshot. That's Jumpy gone down. Now it's a 2 on 2. Now he should give him a chance to get the bomb here. This should allow him to just run up and get it now. Flash goes in, Starix peeking through mid doors and up on short as well. Edwards moving forward, there's the one kill from Starix. Oh, Starix could have actually hit, he didn't expect that guy to be right there under his crosses, he didn't fire. Man. I mean, one on two for Hydrox here, what can he realistically do? I mean, there's still enough time left in the bomb as a plant, so he's gonna run, try and just hope someone peeks along, and if he gets the kill, he'll go for the 1v1. Otherwise, he has to just try and kill all the exit guys and then run away, that was bizarre there. He oh. must have got flashed slightly quicker than we saw there. That could have been it, that was really There we go, weird. now we can go for it. Yeah, one on one with Edward, who's right up close. That means if, if he misses a shot here, Hydrox, he's going to go down. He picks oh, up an AK. That's probably a really smart it, no? move. Right at the edge, oh, flash comes out. Calls it, yeah. I mean, the timing. Come on, just Edward, pick up the kill. Like, Edward can't have known that he'd be there. That was just unfortunate for that player, actually. He actually did, well, like I said, the correct play was like, you have different stages there. Okay, first of all, see if you can get the first free kill to make it 1v1. Can I do that? Okay. Does he peek? No, I can't use the AWP then. I can't run in with an AWP and no scope. So I have to get a rifle. Done that. Now I switch over. Let's just see if Guardian does him. He doesn't. And so he actually did everything correct there, but just unfortunate on the timing of when Edward came out. This time they make it into Lord Dark, though. They are actually successful, but because of the smokes, I'm pretty sure Navi should be checking every corner here. Barsic waiting, and he's going to get the first kill there. So he's going to go down. He gets another one. Nice play. Starix goes down, and in spite of how obvious that play was, it actually works out pretty well. Yeah, that was an example of where as Navi, you can know that they're there. But you still have to hit the shot. It doesn't. Information in CS only matters if you can then actually apply it and make it like something yeah. tangible. You True. might you might have outfought the guy, done the right move, but if he kills you, that's it. It doesn't matter. That's one of the great equalizers in the game. That's why it's not just a tactical game. It's not chess. There's skill as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Basic with a triple kill. Guardian is going to take down Relic though, so it's a two on four. Now we have time to get something done here though, but. It is going to require a little bit of a misplay, I think, on Flipside's uh, point of view. They need to, yeah, do a lot of one-on-one -on -one engagement instead of playing as a team, which hopefully they won't do. Bombs all the way back in T-spawn as well, so Guardian is actually just looking for kills here. He's going to pick up another one, and now it's a one-on-three. The thing is, it is Guardian, though, so if he takes all these people one by one, he can win. Yeah. And his problem here is he hasn't... Oh, until that happened, actually, he had no reason to know that they were there, whereas now he does. Yeah, I think time's running out as well. I mean, well Hydrox now for him. here, in fact, they're probably going to kill him now because they're going to be able to get three people on him. Yeah, they Except should. they go one by one. And they should be killing him. He's pretty much boxed in, but they're a little bit scared to try and fight him. And I can't really blame them. Oh, oh and there's the motion. Looking. See, yeah. that's what's interesting there. Look where his eyes are looking the whole time. I mean, I can't be looking at the ceiling there. There's no way his eyes look up there. But okay. Jumpy I think that might have been a little mistake. So just a quick update for you guys who may be just tuning in. Don't know what that weird dot was. It's actually the motion tracking. He's tracking his eyes for, with the infrared uh, sort of sensor at the bottom of the screen. So we know where he's looking. And obviously, Guardian really close looking at the boxes outside of the V-bomb site then. It wasn't good enough. He got some good kills in then, but still going to be Flipside winning the round. 7-4 to four here, and that gives Flipside more money. Oh. Taking down Guardian. Big kill from Jumpy. Nice shot. I told you Jumpy was not an AWPer in 1.6, and he just killed possibly the best AWPer in CSGO. Yeah. <clears throat> from a position where that the Terrace is supposed to have the advantage in that shot. Oh, yeah. No doubt I about mean, it. I mean, his is point and click. The other guy always has to point, scan, then click. Yeah, there are ways to try and deal with that, like flashing over the wall just before, but there wasn't even anything of that going on. Well, I think the reason he was able to get that kill is that Guardian kept taking that same spot when he did his shot each time. So even though he was getting kills and he was doing good work, it means you know where he's going to be, so he didn't have to fully scan like he would have otherwise. Let's well, see how this is going to be up But more short. half buys again. I think we've seen something like oh. nine rounds where they've half bought. Look at this. Look at Relic. He's in a pretty funny spot here. Actually, they're going to fall back, but if they kept coming, you can jump and shoot with that Mag 7, and it's actually maybe a little bit too effective, it feels like sometimes. If they come back up, they might just run in and die to that. 
It's a 5 on 3 right now. They're going to be pushing out the mid line. He must have heard them jump down. So Basic knows he spots one. That's a first kill. That's a 5 on 2. Not working out for Na'Vi at all in this round. They get the one kill in, but that's it. See, this is where I feel like if you're, if you're a toss spot or something here, you're supposed to be like, and how about these Swedish players? Is anyone out there in the crowd? <laughs> oh, we can yeah. do that later. Oh, okay. We can try and fit that in if later. If they start winning, we'll do that. I'll give we'll, it we'll my best. to the crowd and kind of get them hyped. The one on four here. He's gonna jump up. Starix still looking for the shot, but jump. He will take him down. And the Swedes, they are happy about this. The key thing to remember, though, I don't want to bring any burst anyone's bubble, but remember, the the Swedish team is on CT side, and you're supposed to win more rounds on the CT side. So, listen, they're doing all right, but at the end of the day, Navi looks like they're gonna get to like ten rounds, and that will be more than enough on your T side to pretty much ensure you can win the game. And we'll see. He was right. It's 5-7. So, if, yeah, if, if, it, if it ends up 10-5, I wouldn't rule it out that flip side because they'll do pretty well. But it's, it is going to be an uphill battle. I think, they, I think that they were hoping to win maybe seven or eight rounds here in the first half because they know what a good team they're up against as well. But actually, Navi are econing, so this might change a lot. They're going to be rushing out the middle trying to see if they can kill the shots. They're to have three people caught in now. And amazingly, they turn it into kills. Right, well, Edward comes up. Going to get the one that, kill. Oh, he's oh, trying, he's to, trying knife to knife it. Him. Not going to happen. That's how not worried Navi are. That could have been a definite kill on that guy. Yeah. Just right in the back of the head. And instead he went for the knife. Because he doesn't care. He, he's pretty sure they're going to win the game. Now listen, they probably are. But if you somehow lost, that's the round that you think of like, probably should have just killed him normally. Yeah, that would not be fun. That's the, that's the round where Get Right sniping some guy in the smoke on train. Oh no. Good memories. Luckily, they actually won that series, so that actually ended up not being a problem. This is something Flipside did earlier. There's actually some guy in the smoke right behind Seized, and once the smoke disappears, Relic is going to be here. This is so cool. This is some real ninja play. Oh, yeah, man. This is where they're going to get killed first in the back. Watch. Yeah, well, it's just about to go away. Relic He's going to have to make a move sooner rather than later, otherwise it's going to be He's too gonna late. He's going to get this first kill, but it's whether the guy behind him kills him. This is better to actually move up here. Because they're not going to expect you to be up here. Why would you be? They put down another smoke oh, and always nice. go down. Yeah. But that was such a cool play. Guardian takes him down. That should have probably been at least one kill for Relic. Now Jumpy does get the return and it's a four on four. And they look like they're going to split A again. No, it, the idea was very cool. And also, it was worth the gamble. Because imagine if you'd gotten two kills there and gotten away. That's way better than if you pushed up and got that first one kill and then had to go. Because you'd yeah. probably get killed in the mid. That's, that's, jumpy. A, that's a good example of, of the kind of gamble you should take. And it's going to win them this round. Yeah, it's working out really well. Safe gets double kill. Jumpy gets one, and that's Hydrox with a kill. Wow! And that was after now the eco almost twice, I think, didn't they? They had like this one eco round, and then you know they keep they buy again, and they they're instantly back to eco. Two things, even though Navi probably aren't taking this game as seriously as they could normally, just because it's not a top team, so they're not like forced to. I think you definitely see how differently they do play in that cyber arena. When they won all, the, they won six zero of all the best teams in the world. They were dominating. They were winning like maps like 16 to 3, smashing the best teams. They haven't even looked close to that in this game. With that said, all those silly half buys and flip sides at seven rounds now. I wonder actually if they could be like 10 rounds up if they'd have just bought more conservatively using yeah. normal economic strategy. It might be true actually, but this time, well, Navi does open up pretty well, even though they only had like a few guns. Obviously, it's the 15th round, so they're gonna buy whatever they can. But um, yeah, they've made it into a three on three now. Barsic looking down here on the CT spawn, gonna peek out really soon and does actually do some good damage. And he goes down to Edward anyway. That should not have been a kill no, for Edward. That's an example of where the Navi players are just better. Because the Navi players, both of them, did everything wrong there. The guy on the left didn't even support at all and help. But because this guy couldn't hit his shot, which would be standard for most pros, unfortunately, he couldn't capitalize on it. Again, he, he made the right play, but he got out skilled, which is a, an element of Counter Strike that always is going to be present in it's this sort of a skill disparity. Yeah, well, Guardian looking through the door, and there it is. They are going to win up the, the last round, which is good. But I think 8 7 is really, really far from what what Navi were expecting for the first half here. So we've got to give, I've got to get a lot of credit here to no, Flipside. I would definitely I'm give some credit to them, especially as, like I say, when you half buy like that. Usually you'd expect to win even less rounds because you're essentially like giving yourself like half a chance to win those rounds And so I would have said they'd have ended on like three or four rounds But they, listen, they managed to turn it into that many. It's very well done uh, This initial play if here they can is win the so pistol, cool. Now I'll get excited, you know, that, yeah, that was very cool That was like a classic poker play where you could get the first one, but you gamble you can get more Still worth a highlight even if you didn't pull off. It was a, it was a nice thought if Flipside win this pistol round, they're going to be 10-8 with the lead. So, yeah, could be interesting if they can manage to do that here on the terror side. They are running up, to, well, they were running up middle. Now they're going to be up short. And actually, the eight bomb site's completely clear. They can run in and put the bomb down without almost any contest here. 
damage done to Zeus already. They check everywhere and they're gonna find there's not really many people here. So this is gonna be a complete retake play from Navi. They give up the bomb side and just gonna try and retake it as much as they can. Yeah, what Navi's gambling on here is that again that they can outskill the opponent because they're thinking we can come in with all five and just kill them all. But actually from the positioning, I think they're gonna lose this round. It seems like it. Zeus is very low. Now many, it's just how Zeus many and Edward. Did that take? Oh god, what are we witnessing? This is a big upset, obviously. Definitely this guy Navi hiding to be much here, he hasn't been very good with his gun so far, but it looks like he's going to win around. Safe will pick it up, and now, there now, it is. Now, we're getting a, now we've got the makings of an upset. We haven't got an upset on our hands yet, the makings of an upset. Now they're at least heading towards a potential upset. They've got to secure these anti-equals, though. Yeah, and that's not always easy in Global Offensive. I mean, the, the pistols are really powerful, well, so Teams from CIS love to buy Deagle. It, that's what, they love to buy up on these knives. In fact, teams from CIS are the most famous for doing the half-buy. They'll do that all the time, but the difference is they usually have a, have a reasoning to why, and because they do it so often, they're actually better at it than if a Nordic team tried it out of character, you know. Well, let's see. It's the Desert Eagle for Guardian, which I'm a little bit worried about, because I would have wanted him to do a clean eco, so he could actually definitely pick up an AWP later, but... Yeah, but it's Guardian. He's, he's thinking, I'm just going to kill this guy, so what are you talking about? And is, I'm going to kill him, I'm going to still yeah. have my Desert Eagle, but then I'll have an AWP as well. It's better, right? Yeah, I see what you mean. That is some smart uh, smart thinking, but maybe it's not going to work out that way. He's already uh, eaten a grenade there, down to 40 HP, and going to be falling back from short. Everyone else, though, on, on Navi actually has armor and, uh, and a CZ-75, so they might be able to do some real damage here. Well, they get spotted over on B, and as soon as they spot someone, they're actually going to fall back. Jumpy definitely going to be buying an AWP later. You can see we just with the pistol here. And here we go, here's the B attack. And Navi is already ready, they've already got people rotating. But actually they fall out of the bomb side. I wish they would have had oh. this one guy in here. Now they're going to make a jump by Edward gets a return. But because the bomb isn't down yet, there's a guy going actually from spawn for Navi. So he's potentially going to be able to get the jump on this guy who's in the tunnels right now. Except he's going very slow. And yeah, taking a little bit of time. They got two people yeah, down in Lower Dark as well. He's going a bit slow here. And they brought them all up. So that actually completely counteracts the effect of doing that. Because now there was time for you to have normally got there anyway. Oh, well. And they're just going to wait. They have three armors. Um, maybe and they're, they're, save they're just going to go for the, the exit frags, I guess. Yeah, and looks like Flipside are even running out of the bomb side the right way. Because if they run up to, to Upper Dark, maybe they could have lost a lot of players. Well, here's, here's a potential kill coming if this guy peeks out here. Yep, one of them is going to potentially get killed there. Unnecessary. He's picking that one up and is then going to get taken down. So one of the armors is lost, but I mean, Navi did some damage that round, but no, it's... That, that wasn't a problem actually. The way that ended was fine. Although, I, I, like I said, the guy who went through spawn there, if he'd have run the whole time and they'd have come in normally through the doors and window, then he could have been in a position where you can't normally because you wouldn't gamble and go all the way around that. So he actually potentially could have gotten them to kill if they'd wanted to go for the round, but they obviously didn't want to. It's going to be into the 18th round here. The score is 9-8 in favor of Flipside, which is a, a strange thing to have to say. I would have thought this match would have been like a 16-4 type match in favor of uh, in favor of um, in favor of Navi, but right now that isn't happening. So we'll see. Edward already dropping low down to 12 health. Don't really expect too much from uh, from from Navi in this round. Even the UMP. Everything's going right for Jumpy today. Seems like he can do no wrong. And those UMP kills are big. They give him a lot of money. Obviously, the, the money bonus is really nice. This is starting to get a little bit scary, I think. I mean, I don't think Na'Vi themselves are worried. They're thinking when the gun round comes, what do we care? We just kill them on all the gun rounds and we win the game, right? But if I was them, I'd be getting a little bit concerned. Like, it shouldn't be in this position right now. Yeah, I'd be getting worried too. But maybe that's the problem to begin with from Na'Vi. If that Complacency, mentality is the yeah. one that, that really is uh, supreme here, that's going to be a problem. It's because the problem is, it's actually a flaw in logic. Let's just see what happens here. Look, the fa kill. Fairly standard mop up. What happens is, you think to yourself, well, when I'm playing normally, I just win the rest of the rounds. It's like, yeah, but when you're playing normally, you wouldn't be in this situation, in this scenario, which is just you're not playing normally, so why would you just turn that on out of nowhere? Now, really good players and teams can, so I don't necessarily fault them for that logic, but it, it, you can see there's a circular aspect to it there. Yeah, I know what you mean. And so Edward is going to be saving the armor, which I guess is kind of decent. I mean, he doesn't have to buy oh, it for no the next point. round. There's no point going for a kill and dying and just losing it for no reason and giving money to the other guy. So in that scenario, actually, it's not bad to save. 
But I think it, this is the round it comes down to. I mean, either Na'Vi are going to bounce right back here, or we could potentially have a really huge upset on our hands. I mean, let's watch. Presumably, Guardian will get his AWP. This would be quite something if it really happens. We already have one with SKB. And Jumpy's going to go for it. He's going to take the battle with Guardian. Yeah, but Guardian maybe have got the wrong spawn. At least he was running Look for how long. how aggressive he's going to be here. Oh, and here we go. Stay there, my friend. Uh, no, teammate gonna... probably shouldn't go in front of you there. Might not be a good Lesser idea. Lesser men have been known to press mouse one when that happens. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes just as a warning, you know. A little bit. Leg shot. Look at this, though. Guardian actually without any kind of uh, head armor, so I'm wondering how that's going to play out because there are still two Galils on the other team, so if they find a headshot, he could regret that quite badly. But right now, G Na'Vi, they aren't showing themselves, and flip side are playing just as slowly as if they were Na'Vi. So it's going to come down to the first kill, see if we can get the opening. They got the mid control on flip side, um, so now they're going to be moving up short and maybe thinking about going middle as well. If they, if they realize nobody's short, there's a lot more of an incentive to actually go for a mid push. Bit of a grenade falling down, and they got one guy down on long, and he's about to face how many? Four people are coming for Starix. He's got an M4A1. He's got 20 bullets to kill four people. That's not really fun, is it? And he's he's going to get the one. All. Yeah, and so. he's only going to get the one. Now, Guardian caught in the middle of long. He's going to go down. Safe gets what the kill. That's a double bus. It goes, uh, gets a kill as well. Now, Edward and sees the left two on four Perfect here. flashes. This is sick. Yeah, Navi's in trouble right now. Actually, it was a, a bit of a gamble by that guy to jump down now. It's now in a 2v2 because he jumped down like that. And he might actually go down. He runs out of bullets, and now it's a one on two. Jumpy yeah, has about to clutch to give this. this round away. Oh, that would be devastating if they lost this round because of that one jump down, because they actually had it. They were looking so good. Now, let's see if Jumpy can do it. He's been hitting shots earlier. He gets the first one. Oh now it's word. a one on one. Grenade comes in. Is it going to get it? No, Edward's still alive. One HP. Jumpy's waiting in the back here. He's just going to hit one bullet with the pistol, and he's missing so far. Oh, Edward. Oh, he gets oh. it, Jumpy! He saves Flipside! Good. Incredible play after they almost threw it away! They actually should have given that round away there, because they had the position where the Na'Vi players are all at a head height disadvantage, which you never want to be in CS, because then the other guy can just shoot at your entire head uh, hitbox model, whereas yeah. you can only shoot up at like his legs or, or the, the very bottom of his head model. What do you call it? The box, the hitbox. Yeah. So it looked there like they've given it away. I mean, they've left the guy with the AWP to protect against two people who are flanking from different directions, but if you hit your shots, you can pull it out there. And you can tell also the fact Edward had the one health made him play differently than he would have otherwise. He, if he had full health, he'd jump up on that box and just spray you down. Whereas instead, he kept thinking, I have to catch him out, which he did, but he, he couldn't catch him out in the end. No, it's a smart play from Jumpy as well. Now using I'm starting the to get worried about Na'Vi. Now, this, now there's a little bit of heat under the collar, you know. Absolutely. And they're recoing for one thing, so it's going to be 12 to 8, which is, I mean, numerically not a big difference. It's a four-round difference, so that's not like the end of the world, but it's more like the way Na'Vi are playing right now. I'm getting worried just because of the, the style that Na'Vi is showing us here. The most disappointing aspect as well of that last round was that they could have done a normal crossfire at long, but because of the flashes, they couldn't. And as a result, Starix did his best, but then Guardian was totally out of position. He was neither up, able to kill them, or far enough back he could get away. And he completely wasted his AWP, unfortunately. There's the kill. Seized goes down, and Edward is going to get caught by Jumpy. So flip side, picking it up again. And we were, we were uh, you know, talking about the Swedish crowd. They are pretty hype about this. Even though Flipside is not, you know, a, a stock name in, in Swedish Counter-Strike, not like Fnatic or SK or something no, no. like that. Well, Still I've noticed they, they weren't that into it early on, but then it's like once you've got like the wheels put on the bandwagon and then you've got like a horse in front and you've got the reins on it and you've got enough supplies that this bandwagon could run for a little while, then people start to hop on, you know, they know it's going somewhere. Well, that's the safe bet, isn't it? Hydrox going to pick up the first kill there. Guardian goes down. There's finally a return from Starix, but he goes down. Flipside really good at just trading kills at this point. Four on three, and this is looking, this is looking like a terrifying upset for Na'Vi. Grenade down onto short, and Zeus is going to follow up on it. First and get the first kill. Barsic takes him down. What is going on? Now it's Edward and Ceased, and one is going to go uh, get the kill there finally, but they still are at a disadvantage here. Yeah, th this, uh, this Navi who is playing right now are a million miles from the level of the Navi who won that Starlighter tournament. And at the moment, they look like they have no way to get back to that level within this game. They're actually looking like it's so shaky, they're just going to have to hang on and hope they win. They, they can't flip the switch. That switch is stuck off Anders. The little plastic things over it, and then there's a do not touch sign on it. Or maybe they you need like a code that it, you have to. It yeah. broke in the middle, the actual switch, just the. Ah, now. I hate when that happens. Yeah. You that. know when you were a kid and you kept it in the light switch and putting it halfway between it, it made that yep. crackling sound? 
That's what, you think that's what they've been dying. doing? Yeah, they've messed with it too much and they've broken the circle. Look at this flip side. They do it again. I mean, obviously, they were going to win that round of the two on three like that, but this is... I can't believe it. Never in a million years would I have predicted this. I'm amazed, actually, by how bad the aim has been of some of the Na'Vi players. They really haven't put themselves in positions where they've taken those aim duels, but they're actually losing them all. Oh, let's see. They are going to be... still going to keep going with that up. Jumpy's 22 to 8 at the moment. What are Na'Vi actually doing? That's very good. I mean, opening against Guardian at this level, yeah, that's definitely legit. But look at what Na'Vi are doing. They've bought up this round, but they have almost no grenades. If Flipside slows, plays this a little bit, Na'Vi's going to come... If they lose this round, yeah. I think Flipside's going to do the upset. Probably will. I mean, they're going to they're gonna be... Even going Na'Vi, that's probably going to be it. And Na'Vi don't have the, any grenades yet. They're going to have to rely on pure aim. Rushing out the middle of Flipside. They smoke off CT spawn. They're going to go for that B bomb side bar. There it is. Zeus and Edward take down a couple of players. Hydrox with the return, and he's going to run out of bullets. It's going to be all on Jumpy here. One on four. And the best he can hope for is do some good economic damage. See, that, that's like the CS gods. You know the better team's supposed to win. So I, I said that comment there, okay. If they win this round, I think they're actually going to do it. Of course, then they get totally decimated and they won't even in the round whatsoever. Well, that's what it is, isn't it? Notice, though, that the flip side guys haven't really been that hype, actually. I don't think they fully know that they're going to get this upset yet. Like, I saw them before. When they win around, yeah, they were, like, high-fiving. It wasn't like SK yesterday, though, when they were rolling over Fnatic. Well, do you think that's focus, basically? That they're so focused right now on just trying to stay at this level uh, that they've just given up on being hype? I'd love to buy into that, but I actually think the real reason why is because SK really thought, like, well, we're, we actually think we're better than Fnatic skill-wise. Whereas these guys know, like, okay, it's taken a lot just to get to this point. Like, we could have a, a hard slog for all the rest of the rounds yet. We can't get too excited, you know. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I'm uh, wondering, do we have a little bit of a pause here, or...? And by the way, Flusher should take note. Edward's beard is armed and fully operational. <laughs> it is an impressive beard, I'll give you that. Are you, are you, in, you know, are you being inspired? I feel a bit are inferior, hoping? quite frankly, you know, like... I'm, I'm making questions over my life decisions. What was I thinking? Shaving it down, the trimming, I thought that was grooming. Actually, I just reduced my manliness and, like, the appeal that I could have had to the CS audience here. Maybe that could be, like, a blog that Edward could have. How to, how to Male grooming tips beard. with Edward? Just I, don't. I would read it. No, that would be it. Just don't. Just don't. Just All don't, because right. you're too busy fragging. So now look at this. Guardian, instead of instead of slowing down Na'Vi, they just double up on their aggressiveness. They just keep going for it here. Jumpy takes Jumpy's him gonna down. Jumpy's going to be the MVP right now. I mean, no doubt. This is one of the most incredible plays we've seen from a, from a massive, massive underdog team in this tournament here. Five on four is what we're looking at. If Na'Vi lose this upcoming and, round, and they're going to have nothing. And looks like this guy at Catwalk. Hmm, let's see, he's going to go back. He, he looks right now like he wants to peek out. And they're just waiting for him. But he really wants to peek out around this corner. You ready? Well, flashes rain in. Varsic going to pick up the one kill. There's another one. Zeus goes down. Seas is next. Now it's going to be on Starix. And he gets the one kill. But he's in a one on four. And he keeps fighting them. He's ah, so he did, low he on health. He used the smoke well. But he has no chance now because of his health, unfortunately. Oh, and a grenade will finish it off. Flip side. What yeah, yeah, an heading, incredible do performance. This right now. The way it's going right now... You can't look at Na'Vi's play and say Na'Vi's going to turn it around because Na'Vi can't string together like three rounds in a row at the moment. So how are they going to win out and win the map? Flipside's going to do this upset right now unless they completely break down. That's the only thing. I mean, if, if somebody unplugs one of their keyboards, maybe it won't happen. But right now, it's looking devastating. They're trying to push up the middle here, and Jumpy sees it coming. He actually misses the shot, but that's still great information here for them right, to especially have. Especially for Hydrox here. He can just take this shot and instantly fall back once he sees the guy. So either he kills and he goes away. Oh, they're actually going to bring the opera over. I think we've always known, all of us who's, who've been in Counter-Strike for a while, that, that Swedes are pretty good at playing just naturally at this game, but this is ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, even, even if these aren't completely new players, we can't say they're at the same level of Na'Vi, but well, no, somehow they are. What happened to this jumpy guy? Oh, let's just see what happens here. Oh, there's, there's a kill. I, can, I imagine it's like one of those movies where like some ex-FBI agent has to be brought out to do one last mission, and they go to him, he's deep in the woods, he's chopping wood, and they say, we need you to come out for time, man. He's like, I promised you I'd never do that. <laughs> and they're like, you don't understand, it's little Billy, they've got him. It's like, Billy? The Ukrainians yeah. have him? Well, I, w I don't want to get involved in any political drama right now, so I won't say anything about that. For once, you don't? Navi's going to win this round, though, so we're going to be right back into a, at least a chance for them to get back in the game. Ah, man. I Every want... time you think Flipside's going to seal the deal, Na'Vi has a big round that, that just crushes them. Jumpy actually imagined in his mind that maybe someone was going to boost up on that box and he was looking. If he had got that jumping kill, it would have been insane. But Edward does take him down. There's Guardian with the kill. I think if if, if Na'Vi come back and win this, I'm not even going to call it a great comeback. I'll just... I'll, I don't know what to say. I mean, 
At this point, yeah. it's all flip side. Well, at the moment, Navi is trying to say Gavoy, which means like, go on, come on in Russian. Whereas, I think if they knew Russian, the flip side players would be want to say Domoy, which means go home in Russian. Oh, that's really close. Yeah, yeah. Got to be careful See, when pronouncing I'm that. I'm giving you kind of like international flavor here, Anders. I appreciate the that. The, the <laughs> only word I know in Russian is, well, apart from Nostravia or something, is Mir, which is okay. uh, peace. Is what? Peace. That's all you know. All, you only speak the language of peace, don't of you, course. Anders? That's why you're a Counter Strike commentator, a game where people kill each other in a virtual game. Oh, there's a little bit of irony maybe there. Guardian in the middle, though. Oh, he gets the pickup on Shaka Shaka Shaka. So that, That's a good kill. Did you say Boom Shaka Yeah, I thought I'd just add some sound effects, see what it's like. You should keep that up, though. I like that. Huh? Sabius creeping up here. Mm. It's so close, but actually, no. I'm going to phrase that as a question instead. Um, how do you think about you know finishing the game like this? Is that a talent on itself for flip side? Yeah, yeah. That's the that's exactly one of the areas where in this is why upsets don't happen, believe it or not, normally. You can get the lead, but unless you front run and just blow them out the water, then the best players in the world are the best under pressure, are the best late in games, are the best in the hardest situations. Therefore, you're playing into their hands if you go into a tight game. Now, this is the round obviously where if it goes well, flip side can just close the game essentially. Yeah. So this is why we've all seen that the a couple of times mounts. before, where they had the round where seemingly they were gonna do it and suddenly what happened? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, mentally for Flipside right now, all of them is this point. It's just been all a party, and now is where every kill this counts, and they're this getting them happen. as well. Starix and Seuss, two on four. Oh, my God. Flipside, they have a four-round lead. They're looking to make it match and map point for themselves if they can kill these last two players. The bomb, yeah, it's going to go down. So now the clock is working against Na'Vi. I don't see them coming back from this. No, I don't think they're going to. And the key thing is, when I said before, like, okay, SK was a legit upset of, like, a decent team beating what should have been a much better team. This is, like, a miracle win. Because oh, it's not yeah. even as though you just caught them off guard and you won 16 to 1. You got even into a close game and you kept winning these rounds. Uh, Seuss gets the one killing, but they're not trying to win they the round win. anymore. Yeah, they're just trying to save. Now they, they have, have to play for overtime. So now Navi has to go full five rounds in a row. Which, yeah. listen, Navi could do it still. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm going to put the odds of them doing it at like 20% or... Yeah, I think about 20%, I think I would say. So 8 out of 10 times, I think Flipside closes the game now. They get the... Well, I mean, it doesn't matter that anyone from Flipside died at the end there. What matters is they got one of the two rifles. Well, Jumpy also kept his AWP. Yeah. So he's going to just keep doing that over and over. And the thing is, normally when someone's not in theory a good AWPer, you can exploit that. You actually play against them. But at the moment, that hasn't worked out. So here it is. This could be a, a huge round in this tournament. Maybe, I mean, absolutely the biggest upset we've seen for a really long time, actually. And this was supposed to be the easy group that Navi was supposed to cakewalk through. Yeah, two BYOC teams coming through this group and Navi being the clear favorites. No issue at all for them, it seems. But this is something else. No doubt about that. Right now, Jumpy gets the first kill. Edward goes down. Oh, this could be, there could be a celebration at DreamHack here. Got a massive crowd here in, uh, in Yun Shoping watching the Swedish team play. Ooh, Guardian does get the return. Off. Four on four now. He's going for one more. He misses that shot here. And he's and down to half health. He's got to be careful. But this guy who peeks out now is going to be in a really good position to potentially kill it. Oh, he doesn't actually even get to see him, unfortunately. No, but there's a smoke off, so they're going to go for a split push. Two Navi players are inside this B-bomb is they're going up there. Yeah, they've guessed wrong. This is Navi's chance. Picking off one now. Guardian is alone inside the bomb site. He's at the back of site. He misses the oh, first shot. Now they know be. where he is. And Guardian, he's so low on health. He dies. That might be it. Oh, Hydrox picks up the kill now. Seuss and Starix are left. Two on three retake here for the B bomb site. It's going to be nearly impossible. Flip side. They may have done it. It's a 2v2, though, in that scenario because the other guy went into the hole. So now it's just a legit 2v2. And look at this position. Oh, he's actually going to risk running all the way around because he's worried that a guy's in the tunnels and he isn't. So unfortunately, he's going to delay his teammate getting in. Time's going to be very tight on time here. Oh, he oh, gets the kill now. This. One on two for Hydrox. The time is ticking away. They have a kid picked up on Star and, and they get the kill. It. Oh, they're going to get it in time, but that is... That was close. And the risk for Na'Vi, you said it was a risk, and I think you're right. Splitting up like that took a long time. No, what they essentially did there was, if... I, I think it was Starks or somebody who came in the window. If he looks down and the other guy's actually on the platform, behind the box, then he loses the round outright for like Navi, Navi can't win. So everything had to go right, but it did. That's the key thing. So they stave off elimination for a little bit longer, but it's right on a knife edge right now. Luckily, it's an eco round here, so you'd think Navi's going to get this one, and then it's a three-round game. For Navi, at least. It should be. It should be. If they hang on to this and force it to overtime, I think they're going to be relieved, but I don't think they're going to be excitedly happy at the situation. 
But you're right, this time they should be able to clean it up rather easily. Edward missing a few shots then, and he's going to get the kill. Or actually, Seize helps him out. So it's a flawless round for Na'Vi, and that's something. But um, you can't really... And I don't think Na'Vi can be happy no matter what happens. Even if they win this game at this point, they're still going to be disappointed. The way it's going, though, like I said before, Na'Vi don't string rounds together. So actually, the way it's going, I would still say Flipside's going to do the upset. Like, I haven't seen anything from Na'Vi. They only do it when they're on the elimination round, and now they have to do it every round in a row. Well, we'll and Guardian's see. been surprisingly bad in this game, actually. He's hit very few normal op shots, let alone the party piece flashy op shots that he normally takes, you know. I would have to agree, and that's obviously really bad for Na'Vi. Even if they somehow can finish second in the group, if they lose this match, that is, it's still not good not having Guardian on form because he is such a central player in, in the team right now. But we'll see. Flipside managed to buy once again. They have plenty of grenades, and they have the AWP on Jumpy, too. Apparently, we're being told the other game is at overtime at this point. So we might have two overtime games here. We'll see if Na'Vi can do it. Oh, really? Uh, another thing to point out, though, and I don't want to be a party pooper, is that, well, we'll just see what happens here. Classic could have had great timing. They do trade two for one in favor of Na'Vi, and the bomb is dropped right there. Edward sees it. He's going to call for backup immediately, and he gets the kill. Smart play by Edward, and he's checking everywhere, making sure he's not going to get crept up on by anyone. Guardian with a shot on Sape, and it's going to be down to Jumpy yeah. one on four once again. And he can't go for this, unfortunately. So... What I was going to say was, hmm, yeah, what was I going to say, actually? Yeah, I don't know, actually. I'll tell you if I think. Let's do it. Starix, I, I forget everything because this is just too incredible. I'm, I'm still not really catching oh, up to the fact that Flipside's doing so well. Unfortunately, what I was going to say was, this isn't the same as if this was elimination and Na'Vi was going out now if they lost. Unfortunately, because it's a weak group on paper, Na'Vi actually do know in the back of their minds, even if we lose this, we're probably still through. Now, you have to be second and you have to play a really good team, so you should not even want to make that a possibility. But odds are Na'Vi go through even if they get upset here. And they're going to be running out on long here, Flipside. And, and they're going and towards Silver Time at the moment, mate. They are indeed 15 14, probably going to be the score. So Flipside have one more chance of making this, uh, this miracle happen. Uh, Guardian going to take the last kill then, and that will that'll be it. So we're moving into the 30th I'll, round. I'll admit to you, before I, I felt like Flipside somehow is going to force that round, I actually think it's going to go to overtime now. Jesus, if it goes to overtime, I don't even know what to say. Say, great, it's overtime. This will be really exciting. Come with me as we start overtime. I feel like if it goes to overtime, Navi are probably going <laughs> to win because I feel like Flipside at that point, even just a tiny break, yeah. is probably going to deflate them completely. When, you, when you've been at 15 for so long, that's, that's crushing. Oh, and, and going to do it here. Auto Sniper coming in. Jumpy gets a kill. Jumpy gets a second kill. So actually, they bring it back to a three on three and they keep pushing long here. Jumping oh, down into the pit. Push. A relic is up here. He's going to catch someone. No, he goes down. Seized with the AWP. Now it's and a two on much could one. Be it. Because look at the coverage they have on long A here. Now the one thing going for flip side is the time. They still have so much time left here. And they're going to go to B. The question is, doesn't this guy check mid now, go down tunnels and go over? No, apparently he doesn't. I'm not quite sure. Starix is going to get there in time though. But he's got eight health. If he goes down, then it's a two on two potentially, with, unless he gets someone with him. Yeah, but if he looks to the right here, as in he go, positions to the left and looks to the right, he can see them and then communicate it to the other guy to just come in and get the kills potentially. Let's we'll see, he's up here, auto sniper oh, This is a hand. very aggressive position to be in. Yeah, even more aggressive now, he's jumping up, he's gonna go down, and there it is. This okay. might still happen, it's now. Crucially, look how fast this guy is booking it through the, the tunnels. He's gonna be there as the bomb's planted. This is actually exactly, if you're CTs, how you want to retake the site, except that Edward's just walking at the moment. Well, they're gonna peek out aggressively in window, taking a lot of damage here. Safe gonna challenge they just know quickly. He's there, but that guy in window is gonna be so worried. Listen right to now. the clapping of the crowds. They go for it. He's gonna get the one now. It's a one on two. Edward holding Navi's life in his hands here. That bomb is down, and he's just gonna have to go for it. He's no more grenades. He gets the one kill. Now a one on one. He goes down and flip side. They take the victory. Look at the crowd. They're on the